Hey everyone, alright, so just finished filming my, um, what is it, my Husqvarna 395 review and uh, yeah, so while I'm in the workshop this Harvo, got a bit of time, I thought um, I'll do another video. Um, this one I want to do about, um, about slabbing chains. So I've got a few chains here on the bench. Um, so I just want to talk about, you know, the kind of kind of chains you use for um, for ripping, for cutting slabs. Um, whether you're cutting sort of with an Alaskan mill or uh, on a Lucas mill, on a dedicated slab or on a Lucas mill, um, you're not not generally you don't generally use your standard sort of. Um, your standard sort of crosscut chain for ripping. Um, there's a few things um, that you need for ripping that are a bit different than for crosscutting. So yeah, I I did a video just recently, um, just about it was just a bit of a joke really. Um, I sort of I watch I watch a few other YouTubers and um, yeah, like I watch um, I'm really liking. I'm liking Wrangler Star at the moment. He's doing a, a workshop sort of setup series, and I've you know, been watching that. You know, I'm, I'm in the process here of setting up my woodworking shop as well. Um, just built this shed recently and got all my um, old woodworking tools out of storage. So I'm sort of setting this up at the same time as he's doing his. So he's giving me some good ideas, and yeah, I think he uh, he did a video recently. Um, called Amazing Chainsaw Video or something, um, just as a bit of a joke because people were, people were complaining on his channel about, um, about all the woodworking and workshop videos and they wanted to see chainsaw videos so he did a 10 minute video of just his uh, drone just hovering and looking at a chainsaw. I thought that was actually really funny. Um, I'll sort of get the joke. So I sort of did a bit of a copycat and did my own little video of just me sitting here at my bench sharpening the slabber chain um, with some music in the background. Um, just yeah, couldn't really see anything, not really how to video, just you know, this is sometimes this sort of work is just mundane and you know, you gotta, you gotta get through the uh, mundane, boring things to get into the good stuff. So yeah, I just did a little video of me sitting there sharpening a chain. One of the uh, one of my subscribers, I think, commented um, on the video asking what sort of chain it was, because I was sharpening um, I was sharpening a chain for my um, for the Lucas mill, and yeah, he noticed that I was um, each time I sharpened, I was pulling it through a long way to get to the next tooth. Um, yeah, so he said, well, that's a, that's a skip tooth, but it's skipping way more than one tooth. So I gave him a bit of an explanation um, in my comment of what sort of chain it was, special Lucas Mill chain, um, which I just, I think I made a bit of an error in the comment about the number of teeth that were missing. So I thought I'll do another video and just uh, with a bit more explanation. So here... I've got, I've got um, sort of four big chains um, that I use on my five foot bar. Um, I know it's a bit hard to see because my bench is dark and the chains are dark, but this is sort of the best light I've got in my workshop in this spot. So yeah, I've got some different kinds of chain here. This one here is just your standard standard sort of not skip tooth so it's just got one cutter a uh, you know, in between link and then another cutter and then this one here is your standard skip tooth should have had it around the other way but oh well so you've got a cutter and then two spaces and then another cutter so this is your standard sort of skip tooth um, they're both yeah, you know, these are cross-cutting chains, so that's 
that's ideally what they're meant for. Um, you can use them for ripping, I think. Yeah, that's a ripping chain. That one, I think, is a cross-cut chain. Um, but, you know, when you're talking... When you're talking using a five-foot bar, say, in a... I don't know, for a docking, docking big logs to uh, just to size to get them in the mill or or um, you know using a big bar in an Alaskan mill yeah you know, when you're sharpening a uh, five foot bar five foot chain yeah you know, that is a lot of teeth to sharpen and that gets that takes a lot of time it's, you know by the end of that if you're sharpening by hand you get a sore hand and even if you're sharpening on one of these things still takes a lot of time even with the skip tooth, I found this was this was the chain that I used to run on my Alaskan mill. Um, I had an Alaskan mill before I bought the Lucas mill. So, you know that even that skip tooth takes a lot of time to sharpen. Then, you know, then when I bought the Lucas mill, um, I found on the Lucas mill that they had a skip tooth chain that they provide, which is. It's got like five cutting teeth missing. Um, I think I said on my explanation to my subscriber in the last video that what this skip tooth is, is two cutters and then a gap of five cutters missing and then another two cutters and then six cutters missing. So the that may be what they used to do in order to get that's what I had in my mind that they did was two cutters gap of five two cutters gap of six and what that did was alternated the two cutters from leading with a right cutter and then the next pair leads with the left cutter but yeah I must have made a mistake I don't know why I was thinking five off, two on, six off, but all it is is two on, five off, two on, five off, and what that does is it does, it, it, it leaves you with a pair of cutters that lead from one side, the left. Space of no cutters, and then a pair of cutters that lead from the other side, the right, another space. That's not very much, so that must be where the join is there. So pair, five cutters missing, pair, five cutters missing, pair, five cutters missing. So what, what you end up with is, one, a chain that's a lot easier to sharpen, and you, know, you, can, see, you can see in my video that it probably only takes me 12, like the video's only six minutes long, but... I'm only sharpening one side pretty much, so it's probably about 12 minutes to sharpen by hand a six foot chain, just because there's actually so few teeth. Whereas, you know, if you try to sharpen that thing, look at all those teeth. That takes a good 25, 30 minutes to sharpen that thing and it is a pain in the butt. Um, so what I'll probably do with this chain, um, this is an old cross-cut chain that I was using on my five foot bar. Um, I've made a, um, I've made an old Lucas mill chain into a, into a cross-cut chain for my five foot bar. Um, so yeah, whenever I use, I use this five foot bar on my 395, so I'd like to, um, yeah, I use this uh, this Lucas mill chain on the five foot bar, and it's yeah, it literally takes you ten or fifteen minutes to sharpen it, rather than a good half an hour with that thing. What I'll probably do with this is I'll probably break it down on the on the on the breaker, and then reconnect it together to make it into a few um, a few sort of cross cut chains for my three nine five for the thirty six inch bar or the. 20, 28 inch bar but yeah so basically Lucas Mill when they started out 
This is one of my early chains. They actually used to grind the, I um, don't know if you can see that too well, but they used to grind the cutters off themselves, I think, to make this sort of two on, five off chain. So two on, there's that, there's a cutter ground off there on the other side, cutter ground off there, you can see, another cutter ground off there. So that was how they used to make this two on five off chain. But now I think they must have got together with Oregon and um, now this is a specially made chain. So I don't know whether you can just go and buy this yourself, but I got this through Lucas Mill. So it's two on, five cutted teeth missing, two on, leads from the other side, five cutted teeth missing. So I reckon I haven't tried this chain out on my Alaskan mill <coughs> just because, yeah, since I bought the Lucas mill I haven't used my Alaskan mill again. Um, I reckon this would work. I reckon this, this chain with a, say a 3120 or a big steel I guess if you're a steel man. Um, yeah, so with the 3120 I reckon it would pull this through a big log with a five foot bar on an Alaskan mill um, and yeah certainly be a lot easier to sharpen than this standard skip um, yeah so what else did I want to say I think um, I've been on a job I've been on a job where I was um, consulting for a, another company that had a Lucas mill and he was really struggling to um, get his slabber to, to run properly, um, to cut properly. And we went through a whole lot of things. He said he tried a whole lot of chains and you know, we just got to the point where I gave his Lucas Mill chain a really good sharpen, a couple of little tweaks with some spaces on the bar to get the, to get the bar orientated correctly. And yeah, we managed to get that thing cutting cutting perfectly again and you know he was trying all sorts of different chains and blah 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 and couldn't get it to work but this chain is developed for the Lucas mill um, so you know I wouldn't I wouldn't be bothered if you're having issues with um, slabbing I don't think it's going to be the chain the Lucas mill chains giving you issues unless you're not sharpening it right um, sharpening is really important getting it right is really important um, oh yeah, the other thing, <coughs> what I wanted to talk about with this chain is the reason for this big large gap. Because um, on the Lucas mill you've got a 16 horsepower engine, um, you don't need all those cutting teeth. You know, you, these two on, pair, pair, that's enough. That's enough to cut through the timber. And what the gaps do is they actually make space in between each cutter for the sawdust that you're creating to accumulate. So the sawdust accumulates in this gap and then when it comes around and gets spat out the other side of the log, um, yeah, it, that's where all the sawdust will sit and then get spat away and then clean gap will come around and start chiselling out again and then sort of get spat out. So you find that this gap actually helps the power head to not, you know, the power head's actually working against the chiselling and the cutting of the timber, but it's not working against all that material that it's creating. Um, it's actually got a spot for that material to sit until it can get out of the log. Um, yeah, so they're just a, I think that is the reason for this big skip is that just that's where you, you're creating a lot of you're chiseling out a lot of material with such a such a powerful engine on such a big piece of timber that the sawdust needs somewhere to go until it leaves the groove. Um, so yeah, I think 
same principle would apply for an Alaskan mill. So yeah, if you want to, if you're looking for a, um, a chain to use on your Alaskan mill, I'd say give this one a try. Let's see how it works for you. I am. Um, I was looking through the shed the, uh, today and the other day, just trying to find more of my old chainsaws. I want to build of a build a bit of a make a bit of a wall of honour up here above these lights of the workshop where I put all my old um, all my old dead dead saws, clean them up, put them on the shelf, and yeah, I pulled out my um, my old Alaskan mill as well. So this is where it all started for me. I made this myself, this Alaskan mill, homemade. Um, I had a mate who had a bought one and I just sort of looked at that design and then made my own. It's got the short cross member here which is for the 36 inch bar, cutting small smaller logs. And then you just undo these wing nuts and put this frame in, this cross member in cutting for using with the five foot bar and yeah this is where it all started where I started cutting my slabs for my old furniture making business um, used this thing for a yeah, good six eight years seven years something and yeah then I you know, started getting really busy and selling lots of timber and saved up enough, up enough money and bought a Lucas mill and yeah just haven't looked back since nothing like um, cutting your own timber to make into your own furniture just you know there's nothing more satisfying in this world I don't think than turning a piece of tree into a piece of furniture and just you being able to do the whole lot from the tree to the table you know it's a very satisfying thing to be able to create something like that so yeah, all right. Hope this has been helpful. Just a bit of another bit of a rant about some chainsaw chain. Yeah, any comments, questions? I try to answer comments and you know get back to everybody. Pretty busy person, so doesn't always happen, but keep trying. All right. Thanks for watching.